I'm pastel artist Debbie Harding. Welcome. This presentation that you are about to see is a, um, it's kind of a backstage look at the process that I undertook when I was creating the artwork for a musical called Quilters that is being performed by Olympic Theater Arts. I'm gonna take you on a journey from the idea all the way through to the end result. My husband Casey and I moved to Squim about a year and a half ago from Santa Rosa, California. I'm sitting right now at Gardner Beach and the sun is setting and it's just gorgeous here. When I found out about the possibility of doing artwork for uh, the Olympic Theater Arts, it was a very intriguing idea. I not only felt like it would be an awesome way to connect with more people in the area, but also it seemed um, pretty neat to combine different art forms, uh, the performing arts with visual arts. The director of the musical had some ideas on things he wanted to see in the artwork itself, and one of those was to incorporate scenes from this area. So if I were to incorporate the local landscape here, what better, uh, what better thing to put in it than the Olympic Mountains in the background? Of course, another thing that uh, is a must in any landscape piece of this area would be evergreen trees. The photo that I really like the best is one that is kind of an iconic scene around here. I think a lot of people would say that. And it's the one of the Olympic Mountains peeking through the evergreens as you're going around the S-curve on your way to Port Angeles. I also had to add some sort of a lead-in to the focal point, a path or a trail. Pioneer wagons leaving their mark on the landscape. Inviting you to follow along. Just prior to taking on the task of creating this artwork, I was really taken in with the spring scene around here of all the mustard growing. I chose this ubiquitous plant, the mustard flower, for its cheery, persistent quality really not unlike characteristics that I would imagine the pioneer women had. I was really given a lot of leeway on how to do the artwork. That was up to me except for a few little requests. And one other request was that they wanted me to add Sunbonnet Sue to the, to the piece. I had to look that up. I wasn't familiar, I'm not a quilter, and I kind of had a little bit of an idea, but wanted to be sure. And so I googled it, and here you can see um, a whole page of, of varying of variations of Sunbonnet Sue. I decided to go with the simpler, probably original idea. The artwork is to be used for marketing and as a poster, and so one of the things I needed to consider was the fact that there would be a lot of text uh, written over the top of it too. So as I contemplated all these different design characteristics, I then undertook to drawing the design um, and adding these features of the Olympic Peninsula to the artwork itself. And so the more I thought about the theme, the more I realized that um, we were talking about women who shared their lives together. And as they sat around quilting with one another, their lives really became a part of the quilt and, and quite possibly many designs that they used in their quilts were taken from their life. 
So I decided to take that one giant step further and thought, why not make the quilt itself transform into the landscape or vice versa? By now, I'm certain that you recognize some of these features, the Olympic Mountains and the evergreen trees, the wagon trail. At this point, I wasn't quite sure how to handle putting Sunbonnet Sue in and even added some poppies scattered around. That I changed later because it seemed like it was just getting a little too busy. I experimented with how to draw the fold in the fabric. One of my main concerns was actually to keep the sides of the quilt the proper length. By the time I was drawing the image onto the large piece, I had devised a way of using a piece of string as a measuring tool and draping that back and forth to get the fold. And so a major idea for this painting was starting to come together. At this point, it was important for me to sit down and pick out my working palette. Um, I have many, many pastels, and pastel artists generally will take a look at what they're going to be painting and pull out the pastels they think that they will use. It, it can range in number from possibly 15 to 30 or so. And what this does is it just unifies the look of the painting um, and it also streamlines your effort so you're not constantly hunting for that next pastel. You've already gone ahead and you've chosen that. This small version of the painting I did on a piece of Canson Maitant pastel paper. The purpose being to test the color palette out and also to see if the design that I had in mind would work. You can see here that I've simplified the Sunbonnet Sioux presentation at the bottom and continue to work on the design for the sewing notions. I continue to develop these ideas, even making changes on the final piece. And now it's time to begin the actual full-size artwork. It is a 24 by 36 inch piece. It's very large. And I painted it on UART sanded paper that I had mounted to archival foam core board. As I was working on the piece, I actually forgot to take still photos of the beginning portions of it and just went ahead and painted all the whole landscape portion, partly because um, it's something I'm very familiar with and that I, that happened very quickly. I painted it very quickly. And you can see how I went ahead and in the bottom right hand corner, the purple that's there is the actual underpainting. Uh, I put a very light layer of purple pastel and then wet it with rubbing alcohol, which fixes it almost as though it's watercolor. And actually the whole, um, the whole painting has an underpainting like that in various shades of reds and purples. As you look more closely here at the sky, you can see a little bit of purple peeking through, and that's really the purpose of an underpainting, is to tone the paper so that if, if the pastel skips a little bit over places, you have a, a wonderful rich color showing through instead of just the plain paper. I needed to do something that would give the impression that we're changing just from a landscape painting to fabric. I put uh, lines here in this section you can see to give the impression of the threads in the fabric. In this part you can see that I've taken some time to, um, to actually draw the outline of the sunbonnet zoo. I made a, a stencil and traced around that so I could be sure to get each one of them e exactly the same. So layer upon layer, 
I put the colors down on top of this uh, underpainting. And in the distant field, uh, the, the marks that I use are very horizontal and they're large, they're large marks. And as you move down, you can see that that kind of changes. And as I get closer to the bottom of the field, um, I'm starting to use marks that are very directional in, in um, portraying the, the growth habit of the plants and things. And also there's much more detail in it. And that's another, uh, another thing that adds visual depth to the painting. It occurred to me that um, I hadn't addressed the surface that the quilt was setting on. And very probably what would be there would be um, their dining room table. And so I kind of just dug back into my memory of old barns and barn wood that I had painted in the past and um, added this wood design for the, the table that they might have been working on. In keeping with the idea that the landscape would become the quilt, the sky above slowly became the border around the sides, and the tree boughs, branches, and grasses overlapped the border. The quilting stitch on the side makes its way from the top down to the bottom and becomes more pronounced as you get down into the fabric part. added more layers of color to her dress and hat and to the back side of the quilt to give it a feeling of texture. Additional details like the knot in the table and the highlights on the string, the needle that's sticking in the fabric. final and very important detail. Something was missing. The wagon trail needed to lead somewhere, and what better place to lead than to the very cabin where the women are quilting and sharing their lives. Quite possibly, they are there now. <laughs>